Hi, I'm Sam Short. I'm going to talk about lead and its success story in terms of it being phased out of our society in leaded gasoline. I'll go through its early use, the resulting effects, and eventual recognition as a toxic pollutant. Lead is abundant throughout the earth and is still used extensively in industry to this day. As far back as the Roman Empire, it was used in water pipes, which led to a number of cases of lead poisoning. This was compounded by victims who had lead fillings in their teeth. However, these uses did not make lead a widespread detrimental compound until it began to be used in gasoline as an anti-knock compound in cars. It was used to prevent engine damage and completely combust the fuel in the chambers of the engine by causing them to fire correctly in order. Lead in gasoline was first used in the 20s with the onset of World War II. Use of lead in gas was compounded by the need to fuel the war machines in Europe. It was continually used in this fashion until the early 70s when the EPA began to impose regulations on lowering lead levels in the atmosphere. While these regulations were effective in their own right, the real catalyst for switching away from lead-based gasoline was the introduction of the catalytic converter. This forced oil companies to stop using lead as an additive since it damages the car when used with the catalytic system. While the regulations did play a part in the phase-out of leaded gas, the main factor was the industry making a switch to keep good business. Nonetheless, this promoted the eventual phase-out of the chemical in many countries, and has progressed to a state where lead is almost completely phased out of gasoline. This has led to lead being considered somewhat of a success story in how it is one of the pollutants that has been effectively dealt with by the various nations. When lead was introduced to the atmosphere through the car exhaust, it became immediately available to much of the population. Humans tend to experience lead poisoning through varying symptoms depending on the amount absorbed. Young children and pregnant women are the most at risk from lead exposure as child development can be detrimentally affected from lead exposure. Pregnant women with high amounts of lead exposure have a higher chance of miscarriages and stillbirths. Nerve and brain damage are the most common symptoms of long-term lead exposure with various other aspects of health being affected as well. Short-term exposure to high levels of lead has resulted in vomiting, convulsions, a coma, mental health problems, and even death. These short-term exposure cases were especially prevalent in fuel manufacturing. Lead in the manufacturing industry for the period where it was used in fuel was especially dangerous in its liquid form, where the substance was concentrated and its effects much more pronounced. With clearly such toxic implications in the use of lead, it was not hard to make the choice to eliminate its use. While the health and environmental effects are enough reason to ban lead and gas, the main reason it was banned was due to the development of the catalytic converter. Without this development, the process would have taken much longer than it actually has. Despite this fact, numerous policies and factors have contributed to phasing out lead as effectively in the world as it has. With so many countries having recognized the danger that lead poses in gasoline, the effectiveness of the phase out has been greatly enhanced. Most industrialized nations have banned the uses of such fuels in favor of new additives and technologies, which increase the effectiveness of gasoline in the auto industry. These practices have resulted in a large drop in the atmospheric lead levels over the past few years. North America and Western Europe are two regions which have effectively managed to phase out the use of tetraethyl lead, along with all high-income countries. Though countries in the Asia-Pacific, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East are still employing lead as a fuel additive, the amounts that are used in the fuel have been significantly lowered to reduce the impact associated with the fuel. In conclusion, we've done pretty well with phasing out lead. While it may have taken a while, we have managed to avert a major environmental crisis by phasing it out. Hopefully, we can learn from our experience and pass on a healthier future to our children.